In today's notes, we're going to apply what we've learned so far with quadratic functions and take a look at some word problems. But before we do that, I want to take a look at all the parts of a curve of the parabola and talk about what each part tells us. So let's go ahead and label our x and y axis. This parabola is mainly in quadrant one, and we'll talk about that. And at the top part is our vertex. The vertex is a point which contains an x and a y value. And the x value of the vertex, this tells us when the object is at maximum height. where the y value tells you how high the object gets. Okay, so this vertex, in this case, is a maximum point, as it's the highest point on the curve. So when you're answering questions such as when is the object at that maximum height, that's the x value of the vertex. So you will look straight down to this point here on the x-axis, and this is found using the axis of symmetry. So x equals negative b over 2a. So here's the x value of that point, and then you can, the y value, take a look at, all right, how high does the object get? This um, point here is the y-intercept. And this answers questions such as how high off the ground does the object start? The roots here at the bottom, again, where the parabola crosses the x-axis. Well, we have one that's to the left of the y-axis. That's the negative root, or zero, okay? And this root gets thrown out for being negative. And when I say thrown out, I mean rejected. Because typically, the x-axis here represents the measurement of time. And we don't have a negative time measurement. And then our y-axis typically represents height. So we, go, we don't go below the x-axis as we don't have a negative y-value or a negative height. We do keep this positive zero or root. And this positive zero can answer questions such as, when does the object hit the ground? That would mean your height is zero. Or how long is the object in the air? Any other point on the curve, say this point right here, this is just any x, y value on the curve. The x value gives us our time, but y is the height. So a point like this, we would answer questions such as, how high, that's your y value, is the object after x seconds, as that's our time. So all you do is plug in x to find y. 
Now moving on and taking a look at the first example. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my first quadrant. X and Y axis. It says the model rocket is launched upward with an, an initial velocity of 120 feet per second from a platform that's 40 feet high. So at 40 feet, the rocket's going to be launched, it's going to come up, and it's going to hit the ground. The rocket's height after it has been launched is given by the function S of T is equivalent to negative 16 T squared plus 120 times t plus 40, where s is the height in feet. So this is our height in feet. And this x-axis, our t, is time in seconds. OK? So this equation here can also be written as y equals negative 16x squared plus 120x plus 40. So that's what you want to type in when you're typing it in the calculator. Find the maximum height of the rocket and the time it takes to reach that height. So that's this vertex right here. What is the vertex? So in order to find the vertex, we need to use the axis of symmetry, which would give me that time it takes to reach that height, and then we'll substitute it in to find y. So axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So we have negative 120 over 2 times negative 16. Negative 120 divided by negative 32 is 3.75. Substituting in, again, that's our x or time. y is equivalent to negative 16 times 3.75 squared. I'm plugging it into the original equation for x plus 120 times 3.75 plus 40. And we get a y value of 265. So to answer this question, it takes 3.75 seconds. X was the time. So right here is 3.75 for the rocket. to reach a maximum height of 265 feet. So over on my graph, this y value right here is 265. Number two, again, I'm going to go ahead and draw my x and y axis. In the first quadrant, so y, x, a frog jumps straight up from the ground. So that means on the ground we have a height of 0. The quadratic function f of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 12 times t models the frog's height above the ground after t seconds. So this is, again, height in time where we're looking at our unit of measurement for height is not given and we're given t seconds for time. So I know time is in seconds. Type it in the calculator. We'll have our curve y equals negative 16x squared plus 12x. The frog is here jumping. It starts at a height of zero, comes up, and then comes down, lands. If I want to find out about how long the frog is in the air, that's t, or x. So if I had to solve for x to find out when or how long it's in the air, that's from here to here, it's in the air. So here is a time of zero. I need to know this time. So to solve for the roots, I want to know when y is zero, what's x? So factor out a GCF of negative 4. We have 4x minus 3. Set each factor equal to zero to solve. Divided by negative 4, we get x is zero. So that's when, again, the frog is on the ground. 
And then 4x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 over, we've got 4x equal to 3. Divide by 4, and x is 3 fourths. So the frog is in the air for about 3 quarters of a second. So this time right here is 0.75 seconds. Number two, I'm going to use the picture of the fountain uh, for my word problem. So let's use this blue. So the height of a drop of water in a fountain is given by the equation that's there. H is the height in meters and T is the time in seconds after its release. So I'm going to sketch the X and Y axes in here. Again, we have height in meters and time in seconds. So part A wants to know, find the height to the nearest tenth of a drop of water one and a half seconds after it's released. In part B, at what other time is the drop of water at the same height found in part A? So at one and a half seconds, let's say that's here. What's the height? And then part B, at what other time is the drop of water at the same height? So the same height would be here. So I'm looking at what is this time, and then what is this time? So let's first find the time for part A by substituting in one and a half for T. So H is equal to negative 1.5 squared plus four times 1.5 plus five. Doing the calculation, we get 8.75. It wants us to round to the nearest tenth. So the height is approximately 8.8 .8 meters. Okay, so now for part B, at what other time? So we found this time here to be 8.75, what is this time, or this x? The easiest way to do this question, when we go to your calculator, when you type it in, and you should note that for, when, uh, for x of 1.5, the value is 8.75. So if you scroll down to you see, again, because x is moving along the axis to the right, it's getting bigger, I want to know at what other time or x value do I get 8.75. Now because this is a change in value of 0.5, you're going to want to change your table set. So if you press second, table set. You want to change this change in your table. Right now it should be probably set at 1. You want to change it at 0.5 so you can see Again, you notice this is 1.5. You can see it change or increase. The next one will be 2, 2.5, so on and so forth. So if you scroll down to see the value at which y is 8.75, you should have an x value of 2.5. So the answer, what other time, part b, is 2.5 seconds. The last one, Dilbert stands at the top of a 300 foot cliff, so if we draw in the axes, here's y, the ground is x, and this height here, whoops, that didn't write, is 300 feet. So we're in feet. He throws his book directly upward. I don't know why he would do that. The time is in seconds. And there's our equation. What is the maximum height 
and at what time does this book reach that max height? This is the vertex. So we can do that all by hand. We don't need to use the calculator, but we can look at your table of values. So axis of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a. We get negative 20 over negative 32, which is 0.625. Substituting that into the equation for t, again, or if you rewrote it, y equals negative 16x squared, you substitute for x, and we can find y. So y equals negative 16 times 0.625 squared plus 20 times 0.625 plus 300. So we get a y value of 306.25. So the answer, uh, at what is the maximum height? The answer for this one would be a height of 306 and a quarter feet. And then for the next one, at what time, this was our t or x, that's at 0.625 seconds. So this is the maximum point, part A and B answered that. Part C, it says approximately when does Dilbert's book pass him on the way down? So the book goes up and then it passes him as it comes down right at this point. Now let's say, okay again, it took 0.625 seconds for it to come up to this point. Let's assume it takes 0.625 seconds for it to come down. So double that for part C, 2 times 0.625 is 1.25 seconds. The last part, how long will it take? So your T is your X to reach the ground. So here's where it hits, and this is a root. To find a root, you have to solve for X when Y is 0. So if 0 is equal to negative 16x squared plus 20x plus 300, we have to look to solve by either factoring, quadratic formula, completing the square. I'm first going to divide out by negative 4, and then I can factor that expression. So negative 16 over negative 4 is 4x squared minus 5 times x plus 75. To factor that, it would be 4x plus 15, x minus 5. So for this factor, we have a root of 5. This one you may need to set equal to 0 to solve. Subtracting 15 divided by 4, x is equal to negative 15 over 4. We don't have a negative root, so we're going to reject. That's actually the root that would be over here, but we reject that because it's negative. So my answer for this is 5 seconds.